Hello everybody. Today I would like to continue part three of uh, dysphagia with motility disorder. Motility disorder can be classified into three types: pharyngoesophageal junction disorder, podia esophagus disorder, and lower esophageal sphincter disorder. Pharyngoesophageal junction disorder are due to uh, neurological or the myogenic cause. For example, stroke. A disorder of the body or esophagus include diffuse esophagus, spasm, nutcracker esophagus, autoimmune disorder like the SLE, um, systemic sclerosis, and then reflex associated esophagitis, eosinophilic esophagitis, and idiopathic esophagitis. Disorder of lower esophagus painter uh, include the ecclesia and gastroesophageal reflex disease due to incompetent lower sphincter. Um, ecclesia cardio is uh, the uh, loss of relaxation of lower esophageal sphincter and it is due to the loss of ganglion cells in the myentary upper plexus. It increases incidence of esophageal cancer and it is uh, more common in middle life. The patient can present with uh, dysphagia which is insidious and intermittent and the character of dysphagia is different from um, that of CA esophagus and you have to ask about the character esophagus uh, thoroughly and then the patient can have chest pain due to the esophagus spasm so you may be mistaken for reflex and then the patient can have the regurgitation and nocturnal aspiration. Uh, you can diagnose it by endoscopy, barium radiology, and, and, and then esophageal manometry. And in endoscopy, you can find tight cardio and the food residues in the esophagus. In barium radiology, you can find the holding up of the food residues in the distal esophagus, and that it would mean the distension of the proximal part and then the tapering structure, which is a smooth margin in the distal esophagus, which is a bad speak appearance. And you can find the gastric gas bubble, uh, absent of the gastric gas bubbles. This is a typical bad speak appearance with a smooth margin in ecclesia cardio. And the diagnosis of choice is high resolution in esophageal manometry. And you can find failure of relaxation uh, of the lower esophageal sphincter and no peristalsis and then raise resting pressure in the esophagus. You can treat the ecclesia by endoscopy and the surgery and the medical, me me medical therapy. And then the first one is the endoscopic therapy by the pneumatic dilatation. And complication is the perforation mainly with the larger volume and but it is uh, curative in 75 to 85 percent of the cases. And you can also do the hela myotomy. Uh, and it is a cutting of the muscle of the lower esophagus and cardio. And some, some surgeons prefer adding this procedure with a door operation, which is a fendoplication. Fendoplication is uh, the wrapping of the fantas of the stomach uh, in the lower part of the esophagus. So whenever the stomach contract, it, uh, reduce, uh, it, it prevents the reflex of the its content into the esophagus. And the next one is uh, you can do the myotomy by endoscopy and you can also injure the botulinum via the endoscopy and you can use the drug like the calcium channel blocker and the sapling or nephotomy. But the drug therapy is uh, 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 unsuitable for the long-term use. It is for the transient relief of the symptoms. Disorder of pharyngoesophageal junction are due to the neurological and muscular disorder, but you can do the surgery like the myotomy of uh, cricopharyngeus to alleviate pooling of the saliva and the nocturnal aspiration. The next one is the disorder of the body of esophagus. The patient can have the dysphagia and chest pain. This is a corkscrew esophagus uh, in diffuse esophageal spasm and and the uh, prolonged esophageal um, manometry, which correlate with the 
episode of the manometry abnormality it means the abnormality of the esophagus the spasm of the esophagus correlation with the manometry abnormalities of the diagnostic uh, you can treat with uh, the medical therapy like the calcium channel blocker and the vasodilator like the gtn and then the endoscopic dilatation but they have the only transient effect and extended esophageal myotomy may be required and so uh, relief of the chest pain by uh, vasodilator can also occur with the acute coronary syndrome so the acute coronary syndrome is a differential diagnosis of the um, chest pain to the esophageal muscle disorder and the stricture due to the GRD can also cause esophageal dysphagia and it occurs mainly in the elderly people and the late middle aged people. And you have to distinguish it with the benign and the malignant features because um, CA esophagus is, is also uh, uh, is, uh, caused by the GRD. And the structure is immediately above the esophageal gastric junction and especially one to two centimeters from the esophageal gastric junction. But you can find the smooth mucosa. GRD is due to the loss of competence of lower esophageal sphincter. The patient can have heartburn, abigastric discomfort, and regurgitation. And the patient, uh, the symptoms we can was uh, by lying down. And the gold standard investigation is 24-hour pH study. Uh, this illustration shows the predisposing factors for the GRD. Um, they are increased abdominal pressure, for example, pregnancy and the ascites and then the intra-abdominal malignancy and obesity and the dietary factor are also correlated with the GRD and the and high dyshonia is also a uh, predisposing factors for the GRD and other cause that lead to the abnormal esophageal sphincter and then the defective esophageal clearance can also cause the GRD. And this is the endoscopic findings of acute esophagitis in GRD, and this is a structure, structure, and the white part lesion show the esophagitis. And dilatation, you can dilate the structure with uh, the stent or the volume via the endoscopy, and the lesion responds well. And you can use the long term treatment with the PPI, or you can use the uh, antireflex surgery. And the reflex surgery or the fundoplication, it includes two, two types, total and the partial. And I will show this picture. Total fundoplication is a nascent fundoplication. And this is a tupe posterior endoplication and the door anterior fundoplication. And total fundoplication is associated with the less failure rate, but it has a, a short term complication like the dysphagia. And partial fundoplication. Plication can have a fewer shortened side effects, but uh, it, it has a higher failure rate in the future. The next one is a Shalsky ring, and it's a circular ring in the distal esophagus. Uh, it has a strong association with the reflex disease, so you can use the anti reflex medical therapy, and it also responds well to their uh, dilatation by endoscopy. The next one is a chorus surgery. Uh, it may be due to the attempt to suicide or accidental injection. Uh, it causes severe damage to the mouth, pharynx, uh, larynx, uh, esophagus, and the stomach. And significant structure formation occurs in 50%. Uh, so early intervention is necessary. Early intervention is the aim in the treatment of the cause of injury. And this is in this finding, you can uh, see the multiple structure formation due to the cause of injury. Uh, you can do the endoscopic dilatation and you can do the surgery by resection or replacement of the esophagus and by bypass of the stricture. But the bad point is the removal of the badly damaged esophagus from a scar mediastina is hazardous, so early surgery is necessary. The next one is a drug induced injury. Some antibiotics and the potassium preparation can cause dysphagia so uh, you have to tell your patient that to take this medication with the adequate water and uh, this is an acute 
injury and the patient can have adenophagia apart from the dysphagia and it is a self-limited lesion but no specific treatment is necessary but a stricture can occur in the future. The next one is uh, esophageal infections. Uh, bacterial infection is rare mainly due to the viral, like the happy simplex virus and the cytomegalovirus. It may also be due to the candida albicans. And risk factor are the immunocompromised patient, uh, such as the HIV and diabetes mellitus, and the patient with the steroid and then the anti-cancer chemotherapy. And then you can see the visible thrush in the throat are uh, uh, in association with the esophagitis uh, due to the candida albicans and you can treat it with topical antifungal agent like nystatin. This is uh, white patches in the esophagus in candida esophagitis and this is a typical finding of uh, candida esophagitis in barium swallow x-ray. And the Esophageal infection may be also due to the happy simplex virus and the cytomegalovirus virus infections. And they are also occur in the immunocompromised patient. These are the endoscopic findings. The next one is the eosinophilic esophagitis. The, the uh, cause may be the allergic or the idiopathic origin and it occur in association with the atopic diseases like allergic rhinitis, asthma and foot urticaria and the tr manage uh, the diagnosis is established by endoscopic biopsy and you can see eosinophilics are in histology the treatment is by elimination of diet uh, topical and systemic steroids and immunotherapy derived against the interleukin 5 you can also do endoscopic dilatation if the above therapy fails Okay, and this is the end of the presentation of my part three of the dysphagia. And thanks uh, for viewing my video, and I will upload the dysphagia part four later. Please subscribe my channel.